So can I see a show of hands? How many of you would love to turn your hobby into your job later on? <laughs> Pretty good. And how many of you want to contribute and make this world a better place? <laughs> Fabulous. I think it takes that passion and that contribution to shape a better world together. But let's take a look at the world as it is. What's really happening out there? In 1800, we had one billion people on this planet. Two years ago, seven billion. In about 20 years, nine billion. And over you know, half of those folks <coughs> are already you know, under 25 years old. And a third of the world's population today is 15, younger than you guys, 15 and younger. And these kids want to have a clean environment to live in. They want to have access to health. And they clearly want to have access to education. But just think about universities, for example. We would have to build four universities, each accommodating 30,000 students each week for the next 10 years or so to enable these kids to have a university education. So this is not going to happen. So we have to become much smarter about how we utilize technology to provide that access. And there are a lot of other things going on right now in the world. Uh, you know, if you take a look at, 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 at you guys sitting here, you know, most of you, 70, 80 percent, I don't know the exact number, will end up in jobs that don't even exist today. So it's the great news, I think. You know, you can also help shape your own jobs. The way employers are hiring is also changing. A little bit right now, but I think in the next 10 to 15 years, you'll see that more and more employers will want to hire people on contracts just for you know, specific projects rather than the lifetime sort of employment that we had. I don't even want to say how many years I've been at HP. It's been a great ride while I've been at it, but you know, that's very unusual. It's not how it's happening today. And when employers go and interview you guys for jobs, you know, sure, they'll take a look at your grades, but they'll take a look at what we call these 21st century skills. You know, how you contribute, how you communicate, how you work across these borders in, in a globalized world. So how do you all fit into that world? I think, you know, you guys really fit right into in, in the middle here. You are so extremely well positioned. If you think about it, you know, clearly, you know, you're young and, and, and you're dynamic. And, um, and you're so extremely fast. I mean, this is the first generation, you know, the, the, the one after the millennials called Gen Z, which I don't like. That's why I've given you a new name, and you'll see that in a second. And Gen Z is, is extremely fast, multitasking. I mean, when you guys say feedback, you mean instantaneous. Like, you know, connecting to your friends on, on, on any of these social media platforms. I don't even want to say Facebook anymore because, you know, it's probably something else by now. And when we asked for feedback, we'd leave a voicemail a few years ago, or we'd send an email, and we'd get an answer a day later. That's not you know, how you operate. Much, much, much quicker. And when I say that um, you know, a lot of these jobs don't exist today, what an opportunity. You know, I mean, I created my own job with my team at HP three years ago. And if I can do that in a company with over 330,000 people to create a job that it needs, you know, bring together technology and people's skills to solve some of these big environmental and social problems, God knows you can do it. And I know that a lot of you are already thinking, you know, I'm going to be a permanent freelancer. So you fit right into this model. It's perfect. And I know that many of you want to contribute. So a lot of these words that we've heard before are absolutely perfect. I mean, fearless for sure fast, forward-thinking. And I think this generation also has a little bit more of the feeling of balance. You know, I have to have fun while I'm at it. And I think I have to have passion while I'm at it. The only thing that I would say and I would add here is that I think whilst you're the really first generation that is purely digital, I mean, you guys are the only real digital natives out there. And I don't mean everybody in this room, but the students. <laughs> uh, so. What you need to do is utilize information technology to transform your life and the lives of others. It's great to play games. It's great to communicate. And you need all of that. And maybe you should think about how you can create games to create a better educational system. You need to think about how to utilize IT to transform your life and the life of others. And when I travel, and you know, I just came back from Africa, and I go to places like you know, Kenya, 
Nairobi's the Silicon Savannah. I mean, these folks are incredible. On basic mobile technology, they change their lives. They figure out with what kind of applications they change the banking systems, the communications. It's unbelievable. We can do that. We have it at our fingertips. So use it. And if you add the F word plus IT, that's the name that I would give this generation. It's generation fit. I mean, you guys are fit for this 21st century. You have all the tools that it takes, but you got to use them. And I couldn't agree more with the point on failure. That's why I also put that on, on this slide. And unfortunately, you can't really see it, or maybe it's going to come up in a second. Because if you want to change the world, you got to disrupt. You can't do the same thing again and again. We haven't solved this world's problem. You got to be fearless. <laughs> And you got to fail and do it better next time. I love those examples because I think they're absolutely right on. And it's this spirit, really, that we need in order to, to really move forward. You know, everybody has a role to play. I work for Hewlett Packard. We are one multinational. I think we have a role to play. Governments have a role to play. Nonprofits have a role to play. You all. And we can only solve these problems together. So at HP, I think I have the best job that anybody can have because I get to use our people's skills and our technology to solve some of these big social and environmental problems. One of them is uh, the fact that we have 75 million kids out there that cannot find a job. They're unemployed. That's unacceptable. So what we're doing is we're, we've created a cloud-based program that I want you guys to take a look at. It's www.life-global.org. Go and check it out. Because what it does, it teaches you how to use information technology to do your business plan, your accounting plan, your marketing plan, set up your websites, you know, crowdsource for services, whatever it takes to be a successful entrepreneur. And even if you don't want to set up your own shop, I think these are the type of skills that you need. Because you need to invent yourself all the time. In this freelance type of world, you've got to know where to get the information, you've got to know how to disrupt, and you've got to know how to invent and reinvent yourself. And we've put that program on the cloud. It's in seven languages. It's free. Anybody can take it. And the great thing is there is this lady in Nigeria who's taken the training. And she says, I'm the first digital farmer in Africa. Started with three chickens. She has a lot of chickens now. She's expanded into pigs and other animals and, um, and, and now employs other people. And we have examples from around the world. So I think we all can make a difference. And you can check it out yourself. And if you know people that need that type of a training, let them know. I mean, we all can make sure that everybody gets the tools that they need to start really changing the world. Another example that I'd like to give to you is from the tropical rainforest. Who's been to a tropical rainforest? It's a fascinating environment, isn't it? We had an organization called Conservation International come to HP to say, you know, we've put camera traps up in 16 global rainforests around the world, and they take, you know, millions of pictures. And it takes us about you know, half a year to evaluate what's on these pictures. And it takes big teams of researchers to do this type of analysis. And we need to get this information to protect these animals. There are 30 million species in these rainforests, animals, and plants. And we don't even know which of them are endangered and which of them are, are probably extinct sometime soon, because we don't have the information. So we brought them together with some of our services and our software people. And we created this solution that at HP we call Earth Insights. So it's a software solution that does big data analysis. In, in near real time, once the pixels are up, you can go to a dashboard and can download that anywhere you are in the world. And you can see what's happening in these rainforests. And given that we know that you know, we're losing so much of the rainforest and so many of these animals, and, and, and knowing how important it is to protect them, just think about it. 40% of the air that we breathe in this room, 40% comes straight from the rainforests. Whatever happens there happens here. It's our weather. Our food originates from there, the medication that we take. We got to protect that rainforest. And also because, and I have some selfies here, uh, <laughs> these are <laughs> some of these animals. You know, maybe not the Oscar winning ones, but God, look at them. I mean, uh, great guys, they're worth protecting. Uh, you know, the Western gorilla in Uganda, the agile manga bay, you know, live and learn, and then mongoose. <laughs> I'm not even sure I trade. I, yeah, I mean, look at them. They know that they're being <laughs> photographed, and the wild boar and the manga bay again. <coughs> and, and so, again, it shows that when you apply technology and you have the right type of partners, 
you can start understanding and once you have the information you can do something about it. The third and last example that I'd like to give you is from the health space because we focus on education, environment and health. And there um, I'd like to tell you about a project that we're doing in India. So there are one over one billion people in India and um, most of them have little or no access to healthcare because they live in the rural areas. So they have to walk forever. I mean, it's just hard for us to imagine as we sit at a doctor's office and we think, you know, that hour is already, you know, taking too long. They have to walk for days and then they might or might not get the care that they need. So what we said, rather than bringing the people to the cities or to the places where there is medical uh, uh, service, why don't we create some e-health clinics that we can bring to the people in the <coughs> rural areas? So we've taken some basic shipping containers and equipped them with all the medical equipment that it takes to do a basic physical. We've connected everything to the cloud, so again, data can be uploaded and can be analyzed and the government knows what some of the issues are. We've also connected them to doctor's offices, so doctors can video conference in and do basically all the diagnostics and can start the treatment. And when you then take a look at pictures or when you meet people and they come to you and say, you know what? I've had this pain that I now know is arthritis. I've had it all my life. And for the first time, I feel great. There's nothing. Then you know, you know, there's much more we need to do. And that's why I'm saying again, think about all of these skills. Think about all of the opportunities that you guys have. And how you can maybe come up with some coding, you know, some of these applications that could be put on the cloud could be made available in, e in these e-health centers. Applications to do faster analysis, faster testing, faster this, that or the other. Just think about the stuff that needs to find solutions and how you can contribute. You have all of the tools, in, you know, on your hands, at your fingertips. This generation has more opportunities than we've ever had before. The information that you have available is unbelievable. We gather more information in two days now than we've done all of mankind up to 2003. Some of you will remember 2003. <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. So I want to just leave you with that one thought that, that I just love. I, one of our co-founders said it, I don't know, 70 years ago. Believe that you can change the world. I really think this is what this is all about. If you believe in yourself, in your abilities, and if you then think about what it is that you want to do, and you pursue that dream, others will come with you. And I'm telling you, believe <coughs> that you can change the world, because I'm sure that you can. So with that, I want to thank you.